Is the DMT world real or just a figment of our imagination? This is what a neuroscientist has to say. Joe Rogan had world-renowned DMT and psychedelic researcher Andrew Gallimor on his podcast, one of the brains behind extended state DMT. Gallimore suggests that during the DMT state we are interfacing with some sort of intelligence. Let me explain why. Gallimore starts with an explanation of why the world we experience is constructed as a model. You probably think that your experience of the world is a passive observation, but in reality our brain actually constructs a lot of what we experience. This construction mechanism can be split into a hierarchy, where at the low levels there's sensory information like what we see, hear and touch. Above that level we look for patterns in that sensory information to create order. So recognising that something's a face or a person, and the highest level oversees this entire model, identifying certain patterns based on memories and also recording new ones. To show how this works he uses the Margaret Thatcher effect. In this image her face is upside down. In this configuration your brain struggles to see the whole face and it zooms in on just the individual features like the eyes and the mouth. And right now to your brain this doesn't look like anything unusual. But when I flip this so it's the right side up, your brain's big picture model snaps in and you can clearly see that this is a terrifying image because this is the orientation that your brain's used to seeing faces in. It's able to recognise that something's not right here. Your brain constantly uses this constructed model to make predictions about the world and what's going to happen. Some people believe that the DMT state is just similar to a dream state, but during dreaming our brain also constructs reality based on what we know about the waking world, but it does this without the sensory input. Brain scans during sleep show very little activity in brain regions that are used to process sensory stimuli, like the visual cortex which processes what we see. Evidence for this is while dreaming your brain might be able to create a model of your phone, but it can't recreate the interface and the fine details of actually using your phone. That's because this requires sensory input, which the brain doesn't have during the dream state. Considering how our brain constructs the waking world and our dreams, the experiences that people report during the DMT state would be impossible based on just our sensory experience of the waking world. But Gallimore says that when this molecule hits our brain, it suddenly constructs a world that we never learned how to build. It's like your brain is instantly learning how to speak a new language perfectly. He says these worlds of beautiful crystalline clarity, flawlessly detailed and staggeringly complex, and that there's no simple explanation for why our brains would suddenly be able to create such complex worlds. He thinks that DMT is gating access to a flow of information from some sort of intelligence, and he says that you don't break into the DMT world, but the DMT world breaks through into you. What do you think of Andrew Gallimore's theory? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video then please like, and if you'd like weekly psychedelic videos then don't forget to follow our page.